Good evening. I'm Dr. Bob Morgan, Manager of Environmental Quality at Beaver Water District. During the next few minutes, I want to discuss with you some facts about Beaver Lake and its watershed. The story of Beaver Lake starts with the Great Mississippi Flood of 1927. In 1927, over 14% of Arkansas was underwater. In 1928, after the flood receded, Congress decided they had to do something about controlling the Mississippi River. They delegated the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers to develop a plan for control. In 1929, the Corps began a study of the White River Basin. The Flood Control Act of 1938 authorized construction of six dams in the White River Basin at the discretion of the Corps of Engineers. $25 million were authorized for the construction. Purposes of those dams was to be flood control and hydroelectric power generation. North Fork Dam on the North Fork River, a tributary of the White River, was the first of the six constructed, with construction starting in 1940 and completion in 1948. Bull Shoals Dam and Table Rock Dam were built along the main channel of the river between 1947 and 1954. In 1954, Beaver Dam, then located at the town of Beaver, Arkansas, hence the name Beaver Dam, was authorized. But Corps of Engineers rules require that projects have a benefit-to-cost ratio of one or greater, meaning that the benefits of the project have to outweigh the cost of the project. Because Beaver was the most upstream lake in the White River system, it had the least flood control and the least potential for hydropower production, so the benefit-to-cost ratio fell below one, and Beaver could not be built. The two other dams in the study were Greer's Ferry on the Little Red River and Gilbert Dam on the Buffalo. The Gilbert Dam was never constructed because of the Buffalo National River. The Beaver Lake Association recognized the need for dependable supply of water for Northwest Arkansas. In 1955, after learning that Beaver was not to be built because of the unfavorable benefit-to-cost ratio, they went back to Congress and requested that municipal and industrial water supply be added to the authorized purposes of core reservoirs. Congress passed the Water Supply Act of 1957, which included that provision. The association agreed to purchase storage space in the reservoir sufficient to provide 120 million gallons a day of potable water to counties in northwest Arkansas. That purchase gave Beaver a favorable benefit-to-cost ratio and the project proceeded. Beaver Water District was then formed by the Circuit Court of Washington County to make the purchase of the storage space in the reservoir and to provide water to Benton and Washington counties. Because geologic conditions at Beaver, Arkansas were not favorable for construction of a dam, the dam site was moved approximately six miles upstream near the town of Bush, Arkansas, but the name was retained as Beaver. Construction of the dam began in 1959 and was complete in May of 1965. The dam is a concrete and earthen gravity dam. It is constructed across the White River just west of the city of Eureka Springs, Arkansas. The project also includes a powerhouse with two 56 megawatt generators. Production of power began in 1965. The lake first filled to the top of the conservation pool, that's at ele elevation 1120, in June of 1966, water started flowing to the city of Springdale from Beaver Water District in 1968. When Beaver Lake is filled to the brim, elevation 1130 above mean sea level, its surface covers 31,710 acres. The volume of the lake is 1,957,000 acre foot. Each acre foot of water is equivalent to an area of one acre flooded to a depth of one foot. From the dam west of Eureka Springs, Beaver extends upstream along the Old River Channel approximately 65 miles to near the town of Goshen, Arkansas. Use of Beaver Lake includes hydroelectric power production, flood control, water supply, and recreation. Each year, the Southwest Power Administration markets approximately 172 gigawatt hours of electricity. That's enough electrical power to keep over one and a half million fluorescent light bulbs lit continuously. The power is sold to regional electric utilities. Recreationalists spend an estimated 2.4 million days on Beaver annually. 
Their activities include boating, fishing, water skiing, sailing, swimming, picnicking, hiking, and sightseeing. These recreationalists add roughly $21 million annually to the regional economy. Like most large southern reservoirs, Beaver Lake stratifies each summer. As the water warms in the spring, it becomes less dense and rises to the surface. Cold water sinks to the bottom. The warm upper layer, or epilimnion, and the cold lower layer, the hypolimnion, are separated by a layer of rapidly changing temperature called the thermocline. During the summer, you can feel the thermocline by diving into the lake and swimming down about 12 to 20 feet. Each fall, as the surface water cools and becomes more dense, the lake destratifies. The thermocline disappears and the epilimnion and hypolimnion mix together. Unlike northern lakes, beaver does not freeze and restratify in the winter, hence there is only one turnover annually. There is also a gradient of water quality along the length of the reservoir. Water near the dam is much clearer and cleaner than water in the headwaters where the rivers enter the lake. The gradient can be seen in the annual Secchi Day results. During Secchi Day, dozens of volunteer scientists measure water clarity with a Secchi disk throughout the lake. Near the dam, visibility is from 15 to 25 feet. Near the river inlets, it is normally only 2 to 3 feet. Other pollutants follow the same pattern generally. Beaver Lake is the only source of water large enough to provide for Northwest Arkansas's drinking water needs. Beaver Water District and three other utilities, the Benton and Washington County Regional Water Authority, the Carroll Boone Regional Water District, and the Madison County Rural Water District all take water from Beaver Lake and sell it to customers from Westville, Oklahoma to Harrison, Arkansas. In all, over 350,000 people drink water that came from Beaver Lake. That is roughly one in every eight Arkansans. Let's pause the PowerPoint for just a moment now to let you and the group discuss the following question. What would Northwest Arkansas be like had Beaver Lake not been built. Pause the video now while you conduct your activity. I hope you had a lively discussion. Now let's move along. The next thing we'll be discussing is the Beaver Lake watershed. A watershed for a river, lake, or reservoir is all of the land that drains rain or snow melt into that river, lake, or reservoir. A watershed may be of any size. The Mississippi River watershed, for instance, drains over two-thirds of the continental United States. On the other hand, a pond may have a watershed as small as a few acres or even less. Beaver Lake's watershed covers a little over three-fourths of a million acres, or about 1,200 square miles. From the dam in the north, the watershed extends southward to the crest of the Boston Mountains south of the towns of Winslow and St. Paul. If you are traveling from east to west along US-412, you will enter the watershed several miles east of Huntsville, near the town of Alabama, and exit the watershed on the west side of Fayetteville. The area is divided between the Boston Mountains to the south and the Springfield Plateau to the north. Terrain is hilly to mountainous, soils are generally thin. Much of the geology is referred to as karst. That means it is underlain with limestone and there are numerous streams, springs, creeks, and even sinkholes. The main tributaries of Beaver Lake are the west and middle forks of the White River, White River, Richland Creek, Brush Creek, and War Eagle Creek. The watershed covers parts of five counties and 14 municipalities. Fayetteville, Springdale, and Rogers are the largest cities in the watershed. However, they fall mostly to the west of the watershed divide. Eureka Springs is the closest city to the watershed, but it falls entirely outside of the watershed, even though it is the nearest to the dam. Today, the Beaver Lake watershed is nearly 70% forested. Roughly a fourth of the watershed is in pasture, and the remainder is residential, urban, or water. 
About 90% of the watershed is held by private owners. The U.S. Forest Service manages several thousand acres in the south, and the state of Arkansas manages the Hobbs Estate Conservation Area and the Withrow Springs State Park. The U.S. Army Corps of Engineers manages the lake itself, the shoreline, and their recreational areas around the lake. A lake is a reflection of its watershed. In other words, the conditions in the watershed determine the quality and quantity of water in the lake. In the Ozarks, a healthy watershed will have intact streamside or lakeside zones, a low percentage of impervious cover such as parking lots, rooftops, roads, etc., accessible floodplains, stable stream channels, and diverse biota. Healthy watersheds will assimilate most of the water pollutants present. On the other hand, as a watershed moves away from the healthy condition, it has less ability to assimilate pollutants such as fertilizers, phosphorus and nitrogen, sediment and bacteria. Non-point pollution, or the washing of pollutants into a lake or stream by runoff from a storm, becomes more prevalent and water declines in quality. In addition, point sources of pollution or direct discharges of waste into a water body may further reduce water quality. Through proper management, we can minimize the impacts of both non-point and point source pollution. Beaver Lake currently has very good water quality. The water is generally clear, moderately hard, and the pH is neutral to slightly basic. We have some occasional water quality issues, especially in areas close to the tributaries. These include high turbidity following heavy storms, algae resulting from inflow of phosphorus into the lake, and taste and odor issues related to algae. If we think long term and act proactively, we can keep these issues at a minimum and enjoy our lake for decades or even centuries to come. You, as a lake area resident, are the first line of defense against unintended pollution of our resource. In this set of classes, you and your neighbors will learn best management practices or BMPs for lakefront living. Some will work in your situations, others won't be appropriate. The important thing is to develop your plan and to implement it. Beaver Lake is a resource for all of us. There's an old saying that goes, when you drink the water, think of the well. We drink Beaver Lake every day. Before you go, here are a few questions that you could discuss amongst yourselves. One, how many different ways do you use Beaver Lake or water from Beaver Lake in your daily life? Two, what would the impact on Northwest Arkansas's quality of life be if clarity of Beaver Lake were reduced by 50% due to excessive algae? And three, algae in Beaver Lake responds to the addition or removal of phosphorus. In other words, it is phosphorus limited. Phosphorus is present in all animal waste and fertilizer. What are some likely sources of phosphorus in the Beaver Lake watershed and at a lakefront home site?